welcome to MBS Show, episode number 341. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Charlie. Hello, Norman. Hello, Doc. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How about you? Tired, and I think I might have gotten a cold slash recovering. Uh, let's just say that traveling does make your body feel tired. Hmm, yes, well, try organizing a convention, that will make your body tired as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I heard what, you're a potato? No, no, not potato, you're a pancake. <laughs> yeah, pancake, it was uh, quite, a, quite a rough week, I must say, a really eventful rough week. <laughs> <laughs> it was good, though. It was last week, right, that happened, the convention? Yeah, it was last week, wow, time flies. Yeah, one week ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, gonna do what we did for... See PonyCon and no news, just a con experience. So, from your point of view, Doc, how did it happen? Like, uh, when did all the things really started happening? Because uh, I came in on the Friday, which is the 16th, and I remember you guys telling me that you're not allowed to go to the uh, convention space and do the decorations, something like that. So for this convention, um, it really started, I would say, like for reals, when, when I started doing stuff, uh, it started on Thursday. To be fair, I had to fetch uh, friends from the airport. We are a little bit more international than it seems because the core team members, they are people from Brunei, they are people from Thailand. So uh, in, in all courtesy, I go and pick them up starting from Thursday and carry forward to con preparation on Friday all the way up to the event itself on Saturday. Uh, unlike in 2016, uh, this time we do not get any setup time for uh, for the convention. In 2016, we had the night before where we can decorate the place and arrange the furniture and all that stuff. Uh, this year, we were only given about two hours before the event to set up. So you can imagine that. That, that, that is a little bit of a doozy. <laughs> all right. So Thursday, after picking up some friends, getting things together, uh, Friday was the real, like, the late work uh, day. We had to prepare the badges for the con. I believe, if you remember, there was a tweet about that. Oh, yeah, I, I saw that and I commented, Hey, my name, my name! <laughs> yeah, you saw your name there, that's right. So uh, we had the printing, actually, when, yeah, I think the printing was already done, like, uh, on Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken. So... The, uh, the ticket designs were already, but we had to label the uh, pre-registers. Surprisingly, a large number, if you include the... Uh, y- y- you see, the thing about this convention is that we make friends every year, right? So we kind of know uh, who will be coming for sure, and we prepared their name. Not everybody has uh, like pre-registered and given us their details online, but we know that they will be there anyway, so we prepared the badges with the prints ahead of them. Nice. That's what I like about the convention. It's like, um, we already know that, hey, you're going to be there. So we're, we're going to, we're going to get things ready for you. Even though you didn't like, did Pre-reg. the online. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, it, it was a good one because the stark contrast for this, like, um, 2016, I saw like 50 plus pre-registrations. And then this, this year it was more like, more like 15, I think. Oh, wow. Like that. That, that is a very small number. I was not expecting that. Yeah. But, but at the back of my head, I already need, I already know that this is not the true number. Um, these jokers does just don't want to pre-register, but they will be there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I, I think you can say that this is the benefit of a small con. Yeah, you, you yeah, know people yeah, exactly. are coming, so it's like okay, exactly. I just gonna... you just said what's on my mind. The benefits of a small con, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Official official numbers is at 106, um, but wow. I think that's a very comfortable number. Uh, not very different from 2016 or 2015. Yeah, it's around I, there, it's about 100 plus. Mm-hmm. I have to say, um, having a 100 plus people attending a convention is kind of okay. Okay, uh, it's not going to be hitting BronyCon numbers or even uh, Everfree West numbers, but I think the convention that we had was kind of a more homey roomy kind of it was personal for lack of better word all right that is exactly the uh the the type of convention i was aiming for and i believe we've uh, managed to hit that goal uh, perfectly i've been through the feedback uh, on some social media and and well um the one of the nicer ones is like hey this is like um not like an acg event it felt so different it felt so cozy and roomy and 
and friendly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's exactly what I was aiming for. I'm really happy to to see that comment. That was fun. That was fun. So, um, Friday you couldn't set up. So basically, uh, this was more uh, background work, like uh, yeah. putting the labels and the names. Anything else? Yep. Uh, we la- we put the labels on the tickets. We uh, put them in plastic card holders. We put them on lanyards. Um, that was that was the core uh, thing that we had to do. Uh, then we had to do some other like con preparation. Um, we were supposed to buy ourselves the lunch. Okay. And then carry forward to Saturday, but uh, due to time management issues, we were not able to do that. But <laughs> honestly, right? In all honesty, uh, I feel like buying lunch would have been quote unquote a disaster happening because you got no place to keep it, and then the food oh. might go bad. No, no, no. We had the ice box ready actually. Um, yeah, the ice but... ice packet was there ready, but <laughs> it's just that we didn't have the time to go to. But still, I mean, you were at a mall and it was a pretty good mall because at the mall, you guys had uh, a few good restaurants here and there. But the most important one was a w because, <laughs> heck yeah. A&W oh, they also had a Burger King. King, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the fast food is the, the, the food of choice for conventions. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, in all honesty, a w bro, like a w <laughs> Hey, actually, you're right. Because uh, day one, we had e w for lunch and day two, we had Burger King for lunch. Yeah. So. But like, <laughs> like I mentioned, like you, for me personally, I feel like you don't really need to have the, uh, what you might call this, lunch ready ahead of time. Maybe you mm-hmm. could have, okay, let's say if you really wanted to help the guys out by buying food, you could have a gopher uh, taking orders and ask what you want. Um, limited to cheeseburgers or coney dogs. And there we go. I mean, Still, the food will be warm and same result. But hey, uh, what's done is done. Well, in addition to the foods, well, uh, you think about the computer stuff. Like uh, I had to go through the panelist applications, had to see through some slides. Then I also had to uh, register, no, sorry, the charity sale. I had to prepare for that as well because, um, okay, let me just tell you this, Norman. Like even becoming a vendor at uh, any convention, it's something like a specialist or a special role already. Like, you want to sell stuff to do it properly uh, i believe you need to inventory you have to prepare change even doing that itself it's picking up a lot of your time and it's it's not easy if you want to you know, organize a convention where you want to do a sale true 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 especially you need to have the what you call the spreadsheet of price list yeah. and a small change for the customers and whatnot yeah i understand i understand so, so well, uh, I I didn't do that very well. I I I did that somewhat. I wish I could just put it this way. I wish I could have done better for that part, but um, it all turned out okay. It uh, yeah, the convention merch uh, was printed on time. I had the inventory, and it turned out okay. <laughs> as long as everything turned out well, it was okay. I mean, you were you were running a convention at the same time too, so uh, people will give you some slack, man. Come on, like you're running a convention at the same time with doing the sales, like, ugh. It's like I'm doing two. Oh, I'm doing another thing as well. I did the cosplay. <laughs> I'm part of the cosplay. Yeah, yeah you, you're part of the cosplay. I remember that one, yeah. I mean, uh, nobody really knows what you played, but some people might already guess who you played. But we're not going to yeah. say it. Maybe the Patreons will know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, one of the pre-con prep I have to mention is uh, preparing the vendors as well. Uh, that took quite some work as well. Mm-hmm. I started the whole uh, convention scene, as in before I started the whole convention scene, I was a vendor. So I kind of know what they go through mm-hmm. and I try to make the vending experience as best as I can. Mm-hmm. Meaning to say, um, before the con, I ask them, uh, would you like some pictures up on our website? We'll try to promote your stuff. Uh, would you like some choice of which booth that you would like? So I did all of that until uh, the venue changed from Wokdown to the fest. That was yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, like, I, oh, God. It, but I think, <laughs> I think, I think, yes, you you know how it is, right? Like, just imagine everything was ready. Like, okay, you're gonna go for this slot. You're gonna that guy is gonna go for that slot, and suddenly, like two weeks or three weeks before the event, I got the message that. They're going to close down. And <laughs> everything had to be changed. Oh my goodness. Thankfully, very thankfully, when uh, when I went there to the venue and said that, and they said that, 
Okay, we're going to do banquet tables. Okay, that's easy then. Um, vendors know what banquet tables are. They know the measurements and everybody gets one table. Yay! All right, all right. Like, I think we need to bring up the elephant in the room and that was the venue change. And this this one was kind of a big deal because uh, it was plastered all over your website, posters, even at SiponyCon. And mm-hmm. I think there's even an FEQ about it. Like, did, was that there because people were asking or was that there to preemptively answer a question that people might have asked? It was the latter. It was to preemptively uh, prepare people for the question they might ask. Yeah. And man, like, suddenly, like, do you know what happened to them? Like, suddenly? You mean the previous venue? Yeah, wrecked grounds. Like, it got wrecked. <laughs> yeah, it's gone. It's totally, like, uh, wrecked. <laughs> it's, it's like, renovated and there's totally zero. Uh, apparently, they had to move out um, for reasons of their own. Mm-hmm. They just had to move out and stop the business. So, uh, wow, they yeah, couldn't it's... even wait for you guys to get your things done first. Oh, wow. We were rather unlucky because they had a series of events uh, right up to ours, but uh, I think at our time, they were already stated to be out of the uh, premises. Mm. Even with the contract, that, that, that's just bad. Yeah, but okay, um, this is uh, business stuff, but uh, I would say that these people, even though that they cancelled on us, they were very kind enough to help us out even after the, uh, the cancellation. Mm. Yeah. I mean to say, um, they were honest. You no, know, they gave the full refund. <laughs> All right, that's good. They even uh, borrowed us the projector. The projector used at the convention belongs to uh, Workgrounds. So oh, really? Now? Yeah, yeah. So, the I would say the best out of the um three years of convention uh, out of twenty fifteen sixteen or eighteen, I would say that these people uh, were the most uh, helpful. To, oh, wow. to it. okay. That's cool. That's cool. I mean, it's sad to hear that Workground had to close because from what I saw their place on their website before was pretty cozy and I had a general idea of how to set things up. But yeah, since it was you know. closed down, we had to work with what we had to work with. I mean, there were many things that were worrisome uh, because Workground is a co-working space. We knew the internet wasn't going to be a problem. Everybody is going to get free Wi-Fi. Yay. But after that change, then uh, we don't get that. So we were worried about how we're going to get the uh, teleconference up. Uh, are we going to get internet for ourselves? Very luckily, like uh, we, we got there early and um, the tech team, <laughs> meaning Daniel and Chicken, <laughs> <laughs> they tested the, um, the Sunway Wi-Fi that was stable. Uh-huh. We tested on, on our own data plans mm-hmm. that was rather stable as well. So we decided to go with the uh, venue Wi-Fi, which turned out okay, I guess. But there was still a bit of scripts during the uh, teleconference. I, I think cannot can't be prevented. That's, yeah. that's how... I, I think we'll talk about that one later. So anything else? Like uh, you, you, this is what? Uh, day zero kind of preparation stuff. Yeah, actually it was day minus one too. <laughs> but, <laughs> day zero is the correct term. Yes, we, 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 we prepared uh, lots of... Red, uh, what charity sales mm-hmm. getting the team together you know mm-hmm. and uh, important is the registration badges oh wow oh yeah I like... uh, okay let, let, let me just state right now that there was a moment of panic uh, during the uh, day one oh really when, when we were about to open registration because I had all the badges with me mm-hmm. but I forgotten two most important things <laughs> uh, the big the big registration book okay and the uh the vendor signs. I, I, I left them I left them in the bag which I forgot to bring. Oh no. So there was a scurry of oh, can we get someone to go and go and grab it and, 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 and if they do go, where do we find it? Like where 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 did I last leave it? But thank goodness I really have to thank um actually my family yeah. for being able to find it. And uh yeah, they delivered it to uh, the venue right on time. Like a little bit late, maybe about like twenty fifty our registrations open mm-hmm. but still your, your family has been always been there for you to back you up man like um, the previous TFEs I remember TFE 1 TFE 2 they've always been there for you so yeah your, your family is awesome man yeah, exactly so uh, I haven't okay what I normally do after conventions is that I will post a very long list of thank yous I'm going to put the first the, the top of the list is going to be my family because yeah exactly what you said 
<laughs> you read you read my mind right there. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna yeah. thank first my family. Yeah, true that, true that. I, I wish I could have hang out more and talk to your father, but uh, like wanted to talk to him, but suddenly, oh, everything's so busy. <laughs> <laughs> Typical conventions. Yeah. That's, that's why you're fun. You have, you have always got things to do right there. <laughs> true that, true that. But anyway, um, you mentioned day one and registration. So let's hit into it. Because mm. from what I saw, the line was getting there. Like uh, personally for me, I came in a bit late. But mm-hmm. I seen other pictures and there were lines. Lines were forming. Uh, a lot of people were excited to go in and like, oh, that was awesome. Based on my experience from um, 2015, 2016, I, I knew how the flow was going to be. Uh, they're going to be early people. And uh, after we registered these people in, um, basically the, the person behind the registration booth, they can go in. So that's exactly what happened. Um, for me, I personally like to be at registrations when things open. So I was there and I got those people in. And after that, we prepared for the alleyway interview. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, I came in, I took pictures a bit. I think I sent in to you. And it was a fun time, man. Like, I, I got to meet uh, Starstream again. I got to meet Chicken. And yeah. you guys, like, <laughs> the quote-unquote uh, game member things we had. <laughs> Yeah, they they are our core team actually. Um, it was uh, it was me. It was uh, Saint Pinky Daniel. Mm-hmm. It was Star Street, It was uh, Chicken. They got the most things done. So after the convention space was open, everybody got in. Uh, everybody mm-hmm. took picture. Everybody bought stuff, and yep. boom, uh, the panic happened when Ellie <laughs> really didn't answer her oh, Skype. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all right, <laughs> all right, all right. All right. So, okay, as we both remembered, uh, apparently she, she wasn't really on time. Okay, <laughs> here's the story of uh, what of the lowdown of what happened with Ellie Ray, okay? Mm-hmm. So, on day one itself, I got I was woken up by a Skype call ringtone at 5 a.m. I remember that, yeah. <laughs> it was apparently her test call and to, to check whether everything was okay, but um, I I didn't pick up. Because I just woke up and my voice was very raspy and all that. So uh, the, the, I got the missed call. Okay. I, I just messaged, good morning, it's 5 a.m. here. <laughs> and then she replied, like, oops, sorry, go back to sleep. <laughs> Potato. Pancakes. But it was 5 a.m. So yeah. yes, I, I immediately washed up, get ready. And um, we had the convention party house. Uh, that's what I like to call it. Mm-hmm. If you read the tweet, uh, there was a Pinkie Pie party symbol outside the house. All right. So... Um, everybody was here. Um, maybe I can just like let you let you know that um, you know Yudai Kladai, the uh, an- Indonesian animator. Yeah, I remember him. He was an awesome guy. Yeah. So apparently he was supposed to room in at Daniel's place for the weekend, but I said, that, never mind, Daniel. You can come over here. And and by doing that, uh, I inadvertently invited the horse famous dude over at my place. <laughs> But uh, Daniel, being um, very um, frugal, mm-hmm. he got the, the, the bus ticket for Yudai uh, arriving at 2 a.m. Okay. on Saturday. So you can imagine the hecticness of what's going on inside the house. Like, you know, we're going to party. Uh, we, we had dinner in the San Geo the night before and then spilled over uh, to become like a house party uh, the night. This is day zero to day one, right? Yeah, this is leading up to day one, from day zero to day one. So that night, uh, imagine that, like, okay, uh, we had dinner at the, uh, okay, if I really want to go on, this, this is how, this is how it happened. Mm-hmm. The dinner in Sunway Geo for scouting the venue was uh, done. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Daniel was, he, he, Daniel is just awesome. Like, he got a whole bunch of people from overseas to come, to come over. So it's, it still has got that sea pony con vibe. Uh, with him, it, uh, is one vendor and his friend from Indonesia. Mm-hmm. Uh, Warong Echi. So he's responsible for their 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 hotels and their their booking. So he had to entertain them and take care of them. And then he brought uh Andre, who is attrition mm-hmm. from Singapore as well. He's supposed to room in with Daniel, but because I invited Daniel over here, so therefore I invited him here as well. <laughs> so our our party house was like about eight people inside the house. Oh so. my goodness! Could you just have imagined if I said, "Hey, doc, I want to room in with you. Can I?" And you said yes, and Oh my goodness. 
I couldn't take in anymore because there were there was two. I was talking about one or two other people who asked if uh, it's possible. I said, "Oh, I'm sorry, the house is just really full right now." <laughs> but but this, cool, but... like this, imagine like I asked you before this happened, like, "Oh yeah, sure, it's just going to be you and Star, and yeah, it's going to be okay." Suddenly, the heck. Yes. Yeah, so this this is what happened. But I have no I have no regrets because um for one thing Daniel is just awesome, right? Mm-hmm. So. Uh, so him bringing bringing the guests over and taking care of the overseas people, uh, yeah, that's that's good. Very 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 kind of him. True that, true that. So I I think we segue or we sidetrack to, uh, what you call this to day zero yeah. to one, and we were talking about oh. Ellie. <laughs> yeah, Ellie Ray, right, right, right. Okay, so um, the morning, uh, she 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 woke us up at. She woke me up at 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. and got ready. Everybody, I got everybody ready. And the first time I, I, I seen, oh, I've got a, I've got a house famous fellow in my house. And I was half asleep. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I told that story was, was because there was a delay and a confusion regarding his bus schedule. Or rather, it was the, the bus pickup point. Then, then it was saying something like Bijaya Times Square and BTS, a similar name. So there was confusion. So he arrived at the house late. Like, um, when I got up, I think, I think they just arrived. So they, they, they they slept for a while, like less than two hours before I had to say, Hey guys, we've got to go. The convention is today. So when when I got them all up, okay, they felt they looked like crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, we were all excited, so we just got ready, we got to go. Um about seven seven thirty, Ellie Ray called again and it was a uh, an answer appropriately at with the outside in in, in, in daylight. So she tested tested her um, connection it was good uh and then i told her that i will look forward to you and then she said that you guys sound great i hope that everything will be uh, great and uh, see you in about three hours time seven thirty yeah it's about it's about like uh 10 10 40 like that so i told her specifically three hours time all right all right right. so we packed up and uh okay here's the thing norman Mm -hmm. do you know how difficult it is to play tetris (laughs) with standing Imagine seven big pony standees. We had to figure out how to put it inside the uh, uh, multi-purpose vehicle. Oh, wow. in, in twenty back in twenty sixteen, um, it wasn't that difficult because you put the heavy uh, stuff at the bottom, the computers and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So this year we don't have many computers in boxes, right? Mm-hmm. So you create like a flat surface at the bottom of your truck, and then you're able to put your standees above it. That's not a problem this year. It's a bit of a Tetris thing because the back of the truck is only half filled up and we have to figure out how to tilt each standee correctly into the truck before we transport. Oh no. Oh no. I could just imagine. Oh god. So, yep. We we managed to get everything there and um, I took uh, how many trips? I took two trips, I believe. Ooh. First trip was... Um, just uh, me and chicken and uh, a lot a lot of items at the back. Hmm, Yong was there too. I think we went in, I don't remember the exact details, but uh, we, 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 we did two trips for sure. All right, right. First trip was a load and the second was a passenger haul. Oh, wow. So that, that's going to be hectic. Uh, did Daniel also drove? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, that's right. Uh, Daniel, Daniel was the one who drove in uh, second car. That's right, we had two cars. So unloading was not a problem. Thankfully, parking was free this time. Oh, so, really? No. Uh, yeah, Sammy Joe has free parking on the weekends. Oh, really? Huh, okay. So uh, logistics-wise, it was like very good. You know, not many problems logistically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the mall was kind of new, it seems, and it was kind of okay, kind of cool. So setting up, uh, getting there early, computer. Uh, I, I left chicken with the computer, so uh, he, he was my tech man. We got everything set up good, and then we waited for Ellie Ellie's call, which came well later. I think what <laughs> it was half an hour late. <laughs> I think it was eleven thirty. Yeah, yeah, half an hour oh. late from the schedule of eleven a.m. <laughs> but it was fine. It was it was totally fine because um you know you've you've been there. You've got to be there to be able to experience. I why was you... there. <laughs> <laughs> and... it's, it's... And and here's the yeah, thing, no. I, I felt a bit sad that nobody really recorded the whole thing because, okay, on the schedule, it says 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., which is an hour slot. 
But Ellie yeah. came late, which is 11.30. So you would have thought that, hey, uh, because I came in late, I felt sorry or it's my fault. So I extended to another half an hour, which does eat into the lunch break time, which is eh, passable. But oh no, she wanted to go longer. She wanted yeah. to go longer. Yeah, that's right. She's awesome, man. Like, like she totally didn't mind. For for her, and it's must. It's already like past midnight, you know, approaching one a.m. But she didn't mind. She just has got such enthusiasm, such energy, and such honesty that, you know, it keeps it keeps us makes us happy, makes us feel very wholesome. I that, know. Uh, she's also a wonderful human being. <laughs> I know, I know, and oh gosh, like just hearing her talk and just hearing the con- just just hearing her is just amazing. Like whatever she was saying and oh my let's just say that she is an entertainer she knows how to talk and she's honest yes, then, yeah, yeah, well said well said you know not just an entertainer i would say she's a storyteller that touches your heart ah, <laughs> all right all right more than more than a normal entertainer you know because she felt different yeah, the first time i saw her in garakon was like you can tell by her appearance she's a very um down to a humble uh, person, but when she actually uh, gave that that VA panel in Garakon, that's when I, I realized that oh wow, Ellie Ray is actually um she's really something. <laughs> she's not a main six, but she's really like different. Yeah, and I I think yeah. what uh, during her conference call with you guys, uh, one mm-hmm. of uh, I what was it? I I think well, one of the question was how. Like I think someone asked, uh, how do I get into it? And or mm. th- there was a lot of things going on because someone had a speech impediment or someone was yep. uh, having disabilities, I think. And Eddie straightforward says, um, during my youth, doctors called me retarded. Ooh. Mm. Yes. And she said there is no disabilities. <laughs> that's that's just very encouraging, very motivational, you know. It it. To me, it's, it is what you would like to hear in order to get get up and do something with your life. Yeah, it gets you like motivated. Just, mm, and she does it with everyone. Like she <laughs> she can motivate anyone. That's that's how I put it. And 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 in in a good way, you know, not in a not in a like forceful way, but it makes you want to do it. Makes you makes you feel good. Makes you feel empowered. True that. True that. I mean, Ellie is just awesome overall. I mean. At first, when I heard that you're going to get her, I was a bit worried because nobody really knows who she is. Uh-huh. And okay. it's she's one of the pillars. That's great. But who really knows the pillars, right? If they haven't watched the show uh, regularly and read the comics, they won't know who she is. But exactly. you've proven mm-hmm. me wrong and I've seen what she could do. And I hear on the NBS show, on my own show, Dare say that I'm glad I'm wrong. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Norman. And and you've you've said it absolutely right. Like I already know that when I got her on uh arranged the contract and everything, it's not for her voice talent. It's just because she's herself. <laughs> it is a bit hard to explain, but uh, I I knew it was not uh you know we're we're not really going to be talking about voices and stuff we're just gonna get her to tell stories and that will be awesome which which turned out exactly as it is <laughs> true that and technically that is a huge risk that you took and it paid off I knew after Fiesta Siponicon or even even the years before not everybody watched the show up to date they might have stopped at maybe season four maybe season five and because of this go for the lesser known act, uh, voice actors because it would have been the same thing like <laughs> okay. if you've gone for a main, main then uh, if you start referencing the older episodes then people don't know it'd be like uh, you know not not so much connection if you talk about something more general like, uh, like like how Eddie did so yes it turned out okay it turned out like it was a good plan it succeeded and I'm glad that um, I'm glad it turned out how, 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 how it was Awesome, man. It's, it was an awesome risk taken and it was, it turned out well. It turned out really, really well. Beyond comprehension, really. Thank you, Norman. Thank you. After the, what, one hour and 50 plus minute call with Ellie? <laughs> yep, we took the lunch break. Yeah, lunch break. So, um, I think for me, I went to A&W because A&W! Yay! Mm, good, 
good for you, good for you. <laughs> yeah. Then what after that it was uh, well, what did you have? Like I had a coney dog and some curly fries. What what about you? What, what was your meal? I, I went for um uh, in uh Burger King. Oh, really? really no. Okay. Uh I initially wanted to go to A and W but uh, uh the first thing I I I saw when I got downstairs was Burger King and I just signed up for Burger King. <laughs> All right, all right. All right. I, I bought a total of uh, four meal sets and four a la carte for my team. So, right, so I provided. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So after that happened, there was the cosplay walk and photography session. Sorry, I couldn't make it for this one because lunch. <laughs> lunch. No problem. No problem. So it went well. Uh, there were lots of pictures. Right now, they're in the picture gallery inside our website. Uh, if you go to www.ponycon.my, the first thing you should see there, right there, is linked with the picture gallery. So do click on it. Those have been contributed by uh, a lot of people, yourself included. <laughs> and uh, there are plenty of, um, you know, good quality ones. So I've, I've sorted them out. I've um, placed them in organized folders. You can, you can view them by event. Oh, I'm seeing here uh, is straight going to the what you call this Google Drive, and somebody did record the what you call this interview. Yep, we have a short um one and a half minute uh, interview, and then the other one is like a fifteen minute uh, video. So oh, okay. enjoy. So not not a full video, but still a video is a video. So that's awesome. Yep, yep. awesome. <laughs> So cosplay walk went well. Pictures were taken. Uh, we had we had quite a okay for our size of the con. We uh, I think it approached ten, if I'm not mistaken. You can count them on the phone. Yeah, I I think uh I think you had uh the cadence cosplayers uh evil cadence. So that's what two uh ah. chrysalis uh Celestia, and yes. uh first suitors. There's three of them. There's the mm -hmm. blue bear. And there's mm -hmm. Chrissy, and there's also mm -hmm. Karma. Yep. So I'm ready. sorry, are there what uh, seven already? No, sorry, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight. And uh, Ning, did she cosplay too, or was she something else? She was cosplaying. Oh, there's nine. Uh, yeah, it was different costumes on different days as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned ten. Who's the last one? Um, no, I say it was around ten. I I wasn't sure if it approached ten. Mm. Let's see. Okay, so you should one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, I count eight based on the the big group picture. Oh, okay. So wait, uh, uh could I be wrong? <laughs> no, that's uh, Celestia, three suitors. Uh wait, did I did I miss out someone? Let me check. This one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, it's eight. Oh. Two cadence. One chrysalis. Uh one blue bear. One uh one one light blue pony, mm -hmm. one white pony, one white orange pony. Uh huh. That's here, and a fashion fashion fashionista Ning. Yeah, so there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, a total of eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's fun. That's fun. And mm -hmm. then uh, by looking at this, uh, we get to see what uh, music PMVs and YouTube pony PMVs. Mm. Okay. So, uh, this is actually the creative panel. Uh, it was hosted by Daniel and Yudai Kladai. Daniel talked about his music and uh, Yudai Kladai talked about his animations and they highlighted the Sims animations called The Ponies. It was good. I would say, like, for me personally, uh, being in the fandom for so long and seeing uh, Yudai's work, you know, one of the earlier 2012 kind of work, you know, the person who actually did it, mm -hmm. it felt a little bit surreal no. that we are finally like, oh, this is the dude that made all the stuff which I loved back in 2012. It's like, <gasps> it's in the flash. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I know what you mean. It's like, oh, uh, I like watching this uh, sim simulator thing. It's really fun. And suddenly getting to meet the person who created it. Wait, you're South mm -hmm. Asian? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's that magical moment, like you know, that once oh you've met someone that you you know, like you felt they've known for such a long time, but you're actually just yeah. Time. Technically, you don't really know him. You only know him for his art. I think what the feeling could be similar to meeting, uh, Brad Griffin or Michelle Krieber, mm. or even mm. uh, some other people. <laughs> for example, you, me, or even Dan. Like the first time you meet someone who's famous or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
yeah it was it was just yeah it was just awesome and then um he uh he, he gave me a drawing which was even better like <laughs> a fluttershy drawing because he knew that best pony is fluttershy you you want to know something funny? This is kind of uh, off topic for a bit. No, not really, but it has to do with you die. And mm. during C Pony Con, uh, uh-huh. I was sitting next to him. Uh, he was drawing Glim Glam, uh, with the uh, machete with the pineapple and stuff. He, he was just drawing uh, yeah. that, and he posted it up oh, on the really? Twitters. I remember. Oh, so so he was already sketching it during C Pony Con itself. Yeah, and I was sitting next to him, and I was looking. Ah, oh, that's cool, and. During this time, I was dead tired. I was um, not really thinking straight and just tired. And yeah, okay, that was fun. And then when the animation came up, I was like, wait, I know that. Damn, I was sitting next to him. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, isn't it? Yeah, he, he made the pineapple and pizza pun to life. Oh. Like immediately doing the Kelly Sheridan voice mm. panel bag and see. Yeah. Fun and, then, okay, eh? here's another thing. Here's another thing. Uh, mm-hmm. It is canon that Glim Glam likes pineapple and pizza and Miss May likes pineapple and pizza. So it's two for whatever it is. <laughs> oh shoot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these these guys in the convention memes and whatnot. So... <laughs> we have about to memes, right? we have to keep it going, man. Like we have to ask everybody we meet now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if you're aware there was one guy wearing that shirt. It's canon now oh. and there was Glim Yeah, Glam. I remember that shirt. That shirt is actually in the pictures. Like, uh, yeah, you go in the folder that says incidental. I think you can find it. It's just like, oh, wow. You got to relieve the moments, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, man, that, that was a good shirt. Like, that was a good shirt. <laughs> After that, there's the This Day Aria by Rina Tan. Oh, yeah, that's right. A little bit out of schedule and made me feel bad because... um. They were on time. They wanted to give me the music and all, and I was all ready to 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 prepare the panel. But because I went for the cosplay walk, it was tiring, and um, I, I I just put it this way: I I would have liked to been forefront to be able to uh, get them ready, but I had to let someone else handle it because I couldn't do everything at once. Mm, true, true. But it's hey, true. um, it, it's done. The schedule was out of whack. Yeah, but the performance, wow, I, I, it just blew everyone away. That that was the kicker. Like, It was such a simple performance, true, true. but to me, it was very magical because they delivered. Yeah, you know, true, both, true. Uh, Rina Tan and her partner, Futago, they, they delivered very well. And uh, the applause from the crowd, crowd yeah. that was genuine. Yeah. I and loved it. I think what, uh, we, we're not really mentioning the crowd. Okay, here's the thing. The crowd was awesome. Because we had a range from, you know, the usual bronies. And mm-hmm. here's, the, here's the thing that I enjoyed. We had families coming in. We had mm-hmm. kids coming in. So, Mm-mm. boo, dude, that was just awesome. And uh, a kid showed Ellie Ray her costumes. Like, yo, this is awesome. And here's the thing. Uh, the kid knew that there was going to be a convention there. Sorry, not really the kid, but the parents. But still, the parents knew, like, wow. Yes, it was awesome, right? I mean, um, since 2015, the start of the first DFE, we've always actually attracted a small number of kids, which is, you know, not our target demographic, but then we got it. <laughs> true that, true that. I think one of the main points for that happening is you were holding said convention at a mall. Uh, for mm. uh, the third one, I think it's a bit difficult because finding the location is hard. Oh, yes, yes. The location wasn't ideal. It was more secluded and on the third floor, yes. Third floor near the back, but still, uh, I on day zero, I came in just to check out the place and I already knew that, oh my God, this place is going to be hard. Like, I hope you guys put up some flyers or banners to point out where said location is. Oh boy, don't even start. That was one of the convention problems, which I'm not sure. Are we going to talk about that? Yeah, like what's done is done. <laughs> Uh, it was successful. But still, um, the performance by Rina Tan was awesome because this day Aria is not a easy song to pull off. Even if they mm. did a bit of mistake, they did it in front of a crowd and they loved it. And the performance was great. I mean, they delivered with the with the voices and hitting hitting the notes. It felt it felt like a professional performance for, for that period of time. So I was I was really uh, taken, taken, struck in awe by by their work. Uh, that, that's still that's awesome. That's awesome. 
And, and and their costumes, yeah, their costumes are amazing as well. Yeah, because <laughs> they they were playing Chrysalis and sorry, not really Chrysalis. Uh, they were playing uh Cadence and both of them were playing Cadence. Yeah, and yeah, actually it is it is it is Chrysalis in disguise. Yeah, yeah. But here's the thing. Here's the fun part because before they were singing, they were setting up and saying, "Could you guess who is the real Cadence oh. or the fake Cadence?" And yes. we already knew because oh Rina was the good one. Then suddenly in the song where Chrysalis was supposed to sing, uh, Rina mm-hmm. sang it and like oh okay, uh, this <laughs> is throwing off a loop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, it was the real key. Yeah, so it's like okay, <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, yes. So next one up, I suppose. Yeah, it's uh, our good friend Amy. She did her Lolita mm-hmm. fashion. That was something new. Like the the feedback I got from this panel was like it was something unique. Really now? And, Could uh, you tell me about it? Because from what I saw, there was a lot of going on, like a lot of hoo has and talking about. But I, I didn't really notice much in terms of feedback. Like what happened? No, oh, what happened was that uh, it was actually that it's something unique, which uh, I I just so happened to see on Facebook that she posted up uh, pictures. It was fashionable, um, and I wanted to learn more. So I asked her, uh, would you be okay? Uh, would you like to do a panel? She, she gladly accepted. And I'm glad she did because um, she prepared beforehand. It was a good presentation. But uh, if you notice, one of the vendors, um, Ning, mm-hmm. she, uh, Ning was actually doing a uh, first time uh, Lolita fashion, which uh, according to Emmy, she's uh, like not quite there yet. Like she's still learning. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was a good first time, first attempt. It was like a combination of cosplay and uh, Lolita fashion. All right. According to Emmy, you're not supposed to combine the both. Um, I, I believe they have their own strict rules yeah, and whatnot. Yeah. And uh, another one of our attendees, uh, Chiwa, was in was in costume as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember that. <laughs> so they were the living proof of how you're supposed to uh, do do the fashion. Yeah, and I also and remember you, that there was another girl over there who was interested and somehow got roped into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like one of those unexpected moments, you know, like suddenly there's a there's a new fashion going on, like, how do we do it? Yep, yep, yeah. yep. yep. <laughs> wow. And, easy, and in all honesty, that presentation was nicely done. It, it was professionally done. They had slides, they had uh, examples. Like, let's say, a lot of people were watching and that was just awesome, man. I mean, I went through the slides beforehand. They were really deep and technical. But um, it, as a as a first time introduction, you know, I believe that uh, being there and uh, showing off your costume that is the best way. That is the best way to learn. I certainly got my weekend dose of uh, fashion knowledge just by just by being around uh, fashionable people. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And well, next up is this show that is like crappy. I uh, think like eh. eh, eh. <laughs> What the heck? We are doing the show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, it was the MBS show show thingy. Uh, yeah. this one had its own problems behind the scenes, though. <laughs> it's it's fine. Uh, probably because uh, you know it's it's been a long day, and then towards the end we were, we were both tired. Mm-hmm. But uh, but we managed to give uh, some good tips to our friends. Yeah, it, it was a good talk. It was a good talk. But you know, honestly, um, I was a bit disappointed, really. Don't be disappointed, Norman. It was. I felt it was like, you know, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> in all honesty, in all honesty, um, when I went into doing this presentation, uh, hmm. there was a few factors like uh, behind the scenes. I was thinking, mm-hmm. what should I do? What should I do? And oh, Star yeah. came uh-huh. in and says, "Why don't you do con experience?" And I says, "You know what? Yeah, that sounds good. You're a Patreon member. You you gave me a good idea. I'm gonna use it. <laughs> so yay." Then suddenly, you had something similar in mind, but not too similar. I mean, it's in the vein of the same idea. <laughs> How do I put this? It was, it, was, it was the exact same topic that I was going <laughs> to do. <laughs> it's not really, because it was the same thing, but different. But it's like, oh, uh, you, you want to do something similar? Oh, wow. Okay, uh, I need to um, twist my... Not really twist. I, I need to put my presentation in a new spin because... Uh, if we were to do it, it will be too similar. So, okay, I twisted my thing in a way that uh, didn't really disturb your presentation. And in the end, mm-hmm. I 
felt like we did well, but the crowd was too noisy. Suddenly, there were uh, artists at the back drawing, and the video's up. You guys can see it. I was a bit disappointed because the audio quality was not there. Like that, that was the part that I was a bit peeved with myself. Sorry, no. it's all good. It's all good. I th- I think with live shows that comes with uh that comes with certain difficulties. You know? Like one one thing is being the audio quality. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, all right for 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 that particular um session uh I actually if you realize I wasn't actually able to give my own talk regarding um convention experience in the interest of time mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, mainly because um we were thrown off by the Eddie Ray Clay conflicts but. I told myself and I told Dan that it was totally okay because what Ellie Ray did uh, to deliver the the feeling of of um, wholesomeness mm-hmm. has already been achieved. Like she did it way better than I could have, true that, true and that. Uh, I felt there was no need to repeat for me to try to attempt what what Ellie Ray has already done so well in the morning. So I actually uh, didn't really deliver my my own, my own convention experience stuff. Yeah. Instead. Mm-hmm. I got a, I got a, what do you call it? A heads up from the manager of the venue saying that, uh, hey, it's like four thirty. We have got to, we've got to pack up, and yeah, that's why, that's why I had to remind you of the time as well because uh, they were, uh, we don't, we didn't have the nightlife um, kind of convention this 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 year. Yeah, we we yeah. kind of had to pack up early, so yeah a bit of pressure over there but uh... but still I, I think everything worked out like i would, like my panel thing was it was nice it was just nice and short it was there and i the way i controlled it was pretty okay because i knew that okay not to take up much of your convention ideas or your panel idea so i had to control or spin it in a way where okay i need to rush things out i need to rush things out okay uh, let's go, let's go, let's go. Next person, next person, next person. Okay. Uh, n- let's not do sorry, this. Not, this sorry to say that, Mama, but but ap- it, apparently that you were the sacrificial lamb for this convention. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what? We had to. You know <laughs> what? I, I'm used to it already. I'm used to it already. But anyway, um, the panel was fine. I, I disappointed in itself because of audio qualities and a lot of stuff. Because, eh, stuff. But you know what? <laughs> the NBA show is full of derps. If there's no derbs at all, that means something is not right. <laughs> yeah, it's not the MBS show if you do not have derbs, right? <laughs> yes, indeed. So after that, closing words, and it's quite a rush. So No, it didn't happen. Actually, it, it was more like packing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... Oh. I think we ended off about, about half an hour. Like everything was pushed, pushed back half an hour or something like that. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. Thank you, Ellie. <laughs> So if you remember at that time, uh, Daniel was saying, uh, "All right, we have to back up. Uh, you know, we do not have keys to the hall and all that. Uh, and all that. Mm-hmm. He he did a good job with being the PA PA man for 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 for, for the close for the closing part. True, true. For day one. True, true. After that, we rest up. I I remember going for dinner. Uh, I, what I I think it was um something fried chicken rice place something like that it was very really nice. Uh-huh. I, I haven't posted the picture up on the internet yet, but. Yeah, it was just plain white rice with fried chicken. <laughs> fried chicken, yum. Good, good for you. Good for you. Yeah, and then went pony noodles shopping. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. my my day one dinner was a bit of a uh, was a bit of a uh, hassle. I, I won't co- I won't cover it here in the show because um it's rather long and uh, they're good and they're bad. Mm. But uh, I'll let you know about it later, maybe during a post mortem meeting, which hasn't been done yet. <laughs> all right, all right. So the the post mortem meeting is gonna happen in half an hour's time. So yeah, we need to rip this one. So yeah, the let's go to day two. Let's go to day two. So day two, I I came in a bit late. I'm sorry about that because I was kidnapped by my host. So can't do much. We were wondering if you were okay or not oh, because yeah. uh, you know you were a little bit like uh, sick or tired. Yeah, the, uh, after the day after. Day yeah, I, I was really feeling tired about that one, a bit. But in all honesty, I got kidnapped by my host. So I had to follow them. So, yeah. No problem. No problem. We started a little bit later on day two. I think about nine thirty doors open. Oh really? Nine thirty um, was kind of early. Yeah, nine thirty just for set up. Um, there's not much to set up because uh, we were more or less done already. So I'm in the registration booth and uh, we got ready for 
teleconference with uh, James McCarthy. Yeah, I remember the guy. Uh, Hero of Time, 1000. Yeah. How is he, by the way? Yep. He's great. He's great. You missed the panel, but uh, he was totally like uh, peppy and uh, we did a little like uh, test call. It felt, it's totally like you're talking to a friend online. So he, nothing, he nothing is formal. a friend. <laughs> yes, exactly. So um, I'm just trying to say that we didn't do like a formal like interview, like, oh, uh, question one, question two, and then continue, continue. It was just, just, just go with the flow. There was no script. There was no um, preparation. Uh, okay, maybe there was some preparation. I told him like, uh, we have got one hour, we're going to budget half an hour for chit chat and we're going to budget like 10 minutes for the cutscene and 20 minutes for the gameplay and then 10 minutes for the Q&A. Mm. Roughly. All right. Yeah. By the way, how is his game coming along? Okay, in a nutshell, his game is uh, five years in production. It's still in beta and it's very close to being finished. Oh, nice. So, so it's actually quite awesome because he gave me an updated version of the game, the demo. Uh, which um, I've demoed it at the TFE, but in the interest of time, we weren't able to get to the the, the later parts of the game. So um, what uh, what we are gonna do to continue showcasing the game? Um, one guy from the Discord server, Steven, like uh, he 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 will be streaming the game, and he really had one session um, a couple of days ago. He's gonna stream the game again, and we're gonna see how far he can get, get go into the game. Nice. <laughs> the game was fun. The game was fun. Especially with the voice acting and stuff. That was really awesome. Yep, no whacking noise. And uh, that got some attention. Like, wait, is there no whacking? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it went well. I would say uh, very smoothly. And then when I when I concluded, uh, Daniel came in and said, oh, it's done. And uh, no problem. No problem whatsoever. So everything was going uh, according to uh, time then. Yeah. Yep. It's absolutely fine. Mm-hmm. So then uh, next up is the creative panel featuring Kaspar. Right. So the creative panel, it was more of a day one, day two thing. Ah. Um, because I put uh, Casper and Andy in charge of the artists. So they are the ones who are making sure that the artists will have time to sit down and to draw uh, art materials and whatnot. So ongoing throughout day one, I set up the artist corner. I, I mostly left it up to these two guys to settle everything. And on day two was their spotlight. Um, where they have actually, uh, they'll call up people and then they'll showcase their work, they'll open up their divine art galleries, give them a chance to talk on stage. This is a contrast to how we did it in the previous years, where we actually had a select few of people uh, to come up. This time it was um, more of on the spot, like um, I let the MC decide who gets up, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then he did it great to how the creative panel. Ah. Uh, I mostly took that time to take a break because convention organizing is difficult. Yeah, true. And, and I just did the I just did the interview, so I I I took a back seat and let uh, let the other team members uh, do do stuff during that time. Yeah, which is awesome. Which is awesome. And I remember Casper like uh, I asked him for a drawing of Silver Quill, and he delivered. It was awesome, which is awesome. The uh, work is awesome. Like just look at the pictures. They've they've made so much traditional art and. Uh, Digital art, uh, they, they they played it on the screen, uh, judging by the pictures. So, yeah, things you know things went well. I I I I couldn't be hundred percent at every event and making sure everything was running smoothly. But I trust my team members to know what they're doing and uh, they delivered well. Yeah, true that, true that. And lunch break, and then uh, chicken plate music. Yay! Oh yeah, I I actually prepared. Um, again, this is not me. It's uh, I I just told the crowd uh, that. The next panel, the green one, it would be the vector panel, mm-hmm. and in between we have all these informal, uh, informal sessions. Yeah, and <laughs> so, chicken plate music, which is awesome. And by the way, uh, how how did the them fighting herds demo uh, play through? Like, did that went well? Very well, very very well. Like chicken delivered well, and uh, you know Ahmed from uh, Sifonicon, yeah. like um, the the guy who organized them fighting herds. Uh, yeah, panel yeah. In, so he was chicken was playing with Ahmed. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ahmed actually became part of the <laughs> team who helped uh, make this event a success. So he's going up on the thank you list as well. Like I'm gonna write. <laughs> oh man, I wish I was there, man. I I could have talked a bit more. So they were showcasing like each of the characters, like uh, like you know how the fighting hurts is based off fight, fighting is magic, right? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, this character, like Tian Hao, is a representation of Rainbow Dash. Pom is a representation of Fluttershy. Pinky, Pinky actually. Pom. Pom, Pom is... Pom, Pom. Pom, Pom. No, no. I'm pretty sure Pom is uh, Fluttershy, the, 
the the alpaca no, the llama the, 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 no so, oof, uh, i i forgot uh, oof, uh you know what uh, i i forgot characters all i all i know is <laughs> the alpaca okay. is pinky okay. and i forgot her name <laughs> okay maybe it's yeah maybe it's not the alpaca maybe it's the sheep or the sheep is like. pom- okay the pom pom is a sheep yeah i remember now pom is a sheep right pom is a sheep the sheep is not a sheep right? yeah oh man this the alpaca thing Oh man, I I don't remember her name, <laughs> but you know what? They're awesome. All of them are awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah. Uh, after that, we had the vector pony, uh, vector panel by Arif Pro. Yeah, and um, I got to talk to Arif about this one, and he was surprised that people were interested in vectoring. Exactly what he told me, which makes me even happier because like an unexpected good outcome is always better than an expected good outcome. True that, true that. And I got to talk to him because, uh, you know me, I am a vector artist also. And mm-hmm. hearing him do vectors on Inkscape is something different. And he did a few things in front of my eyes that kind of made me go, wow, that's how you do it? That's really awesome. If it were me, I would do it like this instead of that way. And we were bouncing ideas, and I said, "Cool, uh, you know what? I'm gonna try Inkscape and see how it goes." Thanks for the recommendation, pal. Harry Pro, totally awesome. Like um, initially, wasn't sure if he wanted to do the panel or not, but eventually decided to be very happy. Mm-hmm. And meeting him for the first time was like, "Whoa, dude! You are the most famous dude from Dirt People." Yeah. Whoa! And here's the thing for people who got no idea, Arif Pro here is the guy who. Is it created or just legitimize uh, upvote downvote? He created the downvote OC. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. So uh, he created the downvote OC for uh, Derby Baru, which is kind of mm-hmm. being canonized on Derby Baru now. Exactly, they canonized his character, so like that 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 felt like an achievement itself. You know, like you get one of your OCs canonized in a big image website. True that. Achievement True that. I know, I know. That that's just awesome. Awesome. Like, mm. <laughs> I wish I was there. Then, um, mm. Pony Games Traditional and Digital. Um, this one is the card games and whatnot? Yep. This was the CCG and Dear Princess Celestia. Uh, digital part, I, I just I just went away with it because the original part was um, supposed to play maybe like the, a few Pony modded games, but I felt that with the teleconference for Octavia and the Underworlds channel and also that the dumb fighting hurts, that's enough digital games. So, I just went for the traditionals. Ah, I see. All right, all right. So I, I was there for this one. I, I came in late. Sorry. No problem. So what happened was like we split the artist table in half and then uh, one half was uh, playing these card games just to introduce to people that, hey, we've got pony card games and these things exist. Mm-hmm. So we played them for about half an hour, actually longer than half an hour, but um, it overlapped with uh, the... Uh, Project Saffron Showcase, where Daniel talked about his uh, to do in India. Yeah, mm. which was quite interesting. I, I actually went back to look at the slides carefully because um, a bit difficult to play the game and and, and, and listen to the presentation. Mm-hmm. But he did give that presentation at Sea PonyCon as well, mm-hmm. to be fair. Mm-hmm. So after looking at it a couple of times, I, I get where he's going at. Like, uh, I understand why why it's... Uh, it's a worthwhile project to, to undertake. True, true. Yeah, and what Dan says and what Dan has explained is really interesting and uh, wishing all the best because what he's doing is kind of risky. Mm, it's a totally unknown territory, so we have no idea what to what to expect. True that. But he's always been a person to take risks. Even even Project C Polygon itself is, is a risky uh, thing to true, do. True, 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 really? true. So after this one is the closing words and yeah, the, this one was awesome, man. Like the the parting words were just good. It's it's very short. Like it's supposed to be an hour long, yeah. right? But nah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Uh, we had sales to do, and this one was my favorite part because we we did, we yeah. wanted to do kind of the what you call this, uh, bidding war thing, but Malaysians don't really do bids. <laughs> We get the idea right. I think what we did was totally right, but our audience was just not the suited, suitable audience. Nonetheless, we, we we did good, and then we managed to give the experience to some people. True, 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 and true. Uh, 
if they want more, they have got to go to overseas con oh, to get the true. Overseas yeah. con are just scary, man. Like <laughs> we we were looking through the American visa just now just to see how much it is, and mm. uh, what was it? Uh, One hundred sixty dollars is equivalent to <laughs> almost six hundred plus ringgit. Oh God. Yeah. That's right, that's right. They're thinking of the big one, right? Like BronyCon, right? Uh, anywhere <laughs> so, that does the uh, bidding war thingy. Okay, okay. Yeah. Any place. Hopefully somewhere cheaper. Yeah, <laughs> but still, um, maybe Singapore, if then does another one. <laughs> but um, <laughs> as per usual, I did my magic with selling plush. And I, I think I managed to sell almost all of your plush. The ones that are out there on the table, yes, yes. I believe yeah. so. I believe so. But the standees, oh. uh, we managed to sell all, all of them except standees. for rarity, was it? No, no, no. I think it was three standees. It was Applejack, Twilight, and Rosa. Rosa. Uh, Rainbow Dash was pre bought oh. the other day, <laughs> so Rainbow Dash is our yes. joke. <laughs> because it's funny because people were asking, but then, nope, she's already pre booked. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, th- those standees were uh, sold and sent to a better home. I, I think Charles bought yep. Twilight, so yay. That's going to be awesome. Yep. That's right. Twilight and Applejack, too. Applejack. Uh, who bought Applejack? Did Charles bought Applejack? Yep, he was both. All right. He got both. So how did he brought that home? <laughs> <laughs> it's still in storage oh. uh, on my side because, uh, you know, come... He had no chance. Yeah, it... Transporting those things requires uh, requires a, a truck, an MTV, <laughs> a, a truck. Yeah, that yeah. requires a truck. Yeah. But yeah, um, in the end, uh, charity sale was good. A lot of people got what they want. Uh, a lot of plushies were sold, and yeah, yeah, we raised quite quite a good number. I, the official figure is uh, two hundred and fifty for the charity sale. Um, added to the the one that was paid forward uh, the month before, mm-hmm. another two fifty. So the total is 500 and if you can find all this information at www.ponycon.my slash charity. Yeah, slash charity. That's the one. Yeah. I... The page is there. It's updated. Yeah. Well, mostly everything is updated. Go have a look. You know, cool stuff over there. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking here and yeah, during the last part of the convention on day two, we held a charity sale to raise funds for NCSM. Thanks to Julie the Dragon, Cheryl and the Tango, and the TFE charity sales team for collectively raising a grand total of 250 ringgit during the event. Yeah, I feel great. <laughs> Successful, right? Like, yes, we managed. We did it. Yep, yep. <laughs> we earned money for charity. Yay. Again, yay. Much awesomeness, much awesomeness. And with that, they ended. I went back home to my host uh, house and... Well, what did I had for that night? I don't remember. Oh yeah, I remember. Sorry, <laughs> I remember what I had. But what what did, what did you have? Okay, uh, I went to tapak. What's that? Um, in a general term, tapak means a uh, plot of land where people do stuff. Um, this one was at the near. It said a shopping mall. I remember one of the NWs that they quote unquote said that they wanted to tear down but didn't. Oh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. In, that's in PJ, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, near um, Jules house. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So, I got it, I got anyway, it. Anyway, um, we went there for dinner because uh, I said that, hey, I wanted to try something awesome, something awesome food because um, I'm not local there. So, you know, just going to go around and see what you guys have. And they said tapa. And okay, I said, let's go. Let's, that's cool. Let's go. And... Um, unfortunately for me, the selection was not that much, but there were a few good sellers and whatnot. So before that, I went to the mall itself, and there's a family mart over there. For people who got no idea, family mart is the Japanese equivalent to a Seven Eleven, but much better. All right, awesome. Have you been to a family mart before? Oh, it's a mart to go to. Ever since I found out they sell only GD. Yeah. Okay. You might not know this, but I was in Sarawak for like about three years or something, uh-huh. right? And we didn't know Family Mart. In that, in my absence, Family Mart started mushrooming out around. And then when I got back from the from from East Malaysia, I go to the airport. What? They've got this in KLIA too? Oh, that's so awesome! I go and buy all the onigiri and 
you know, mm-hmm. it's just like awesome. Yeah, I know, you know, same here. Like, <laughs> you want to know something funny about Family Mart? Mm-hmm. Um, Why not? When I went to TFE, it was on the Friday. It was the official opening of Family Mart in my hometown. It's like, hmm, okay. <laughs> awesome. I know. So, anywho. Uh, mushrooms are all over the place. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. anywho, uh, went there, look at cool stuff. So, yeah, I'm not going to eat at the Family Mart because I want to eat at the Tapa. So, went to Tapa. I saw a lot of cool things. So, I ordered myself a uh, chicken burger and some macaroni and cheese. And, mm. well, I had a really good time there. Like, uh, the food was awesome. What about you, man? Oh, well, we collectively decided to go to KFC, nice. which turned out to be a good success because I told you in Saturday we didn't have a really good experience, but uh, Sunday was better. Everybody came for KFC. Um, it was my treat. So everybody enjoyed, um, like, the, was it a bucket? Yeah, I think it was a bucket. <laughs> and uh, everybody got fed, and then uh, we... We had to adjourn to uh, back to the party house. Yeah, <laughs> and what happened? Like more card games happen? It's a bit of good and bad. Um, mixed, mixed thing. I'll just put it briefly for you since the whole story is kind of long. A couple of them had to go back and catch their bus. When when they finally all got together, we were, we were a little bit tired. But we managed to, um, you know, play a, a, a drinking game. <laughs> all right. <laughs> You said a drinking game. I have a story of my own, but carry, carry on first. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we, uh, we, we did that. Uh, of course, I was really tired, but we still, you know, good friends. Um, basically, put it this way. the uh, How Daniel told me, like, I hosted daily meetups for six days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Five days, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> yes. That's how long the party actually lasted for, 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 for me and, and the party house people. Because... And that is the reason why that the um, uh, TFE website, Twitter, and Facebook has not been really quickly up to date. Normally, post event, uh, you know, the PR team is supposed to get everything up, yeah. right? The picture, yep. donation, and whatever. But I finally only got them done like today. And even Facebook is not yet updated. Only Twitter and the website is updated. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's just say that you guys have too much fun. <laughs> yes. And yes, well, the website site still has some things I would like to, to fix, but uh, I'm taking my time on that. Like The important part, like when the friends are here, especially people from Brunei, from Thailand, uh, from all over the country, right? Singapore, Saramban, when they are around, uh, priority goes to the human interaction rather than the computer interaction. True that, true that. I, I really, really, really enjoyed my time with the guys. Six, seven days, actually. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds awesome, man. Like, a six-day meetup. Woo! <laughs> Even right now, so, like, uh, we, we are talking and doing this, it's, it's still continuing the human interaction, and it's still, it's still you know, fun. Yeah, like, true that, true We need that. to live life to the fullest and enjoy what, what, what we have. Computer stuff, they can come, they can come a bit later. Yeah, true that, true that. But, mm-hmm. anywho, um, talking about the drinking game, right? Um, during the <laughs> night, when I was at my host's house uh, we played Red Dragon Inn oh good. that's a good part I, know, I enjoyed I know. it and this is the physical board game and it's like when I started playing this I thought that hey wait didn't we play this on Steam on Tabletop Sim <laughs> yeah you did uh, I'm not sure if you played it on all the board as no, well no I didn't oh no 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 we played it on on, 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 on Steam on Tabletop Simulator yeah yeah we did that and like oh my god this is uh, I remember this like, this is fun this is fun but playing it in person Oh my goodness, the interaction, the mind games, the meta game. Like, oh, if you're playing uh, a deck that has gamble a lot and nobody wants to play, it's technically not worth it. Like, you could just play the card and people say, I opt out from gambling, I opt out from gambling. So nobody's playing it. Like, oh damn. Yeah, I get it. The gambling mini game. Yeah, and then nobody plays it. Like, oh no. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Red Dragon Inn is a fun game. I, I highly recommend playing it. It is a simple yet complex game to get into and this is not including the expansion pack that came along Whew. I was actually about to ask did you play with or without the expansion pack? Nah, my host family didn't have the expansion pack uh, it was just the base game but the base game is already fun mm-hmm. that's awesome yeah, we, we really need to play that game again man like <laughs> we really need to do it just hit me up on tabletop simulator like when, when the rest of the guys are around mm-hmm. we can have a second yeah, we, 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 we need to plan we need to plan 
But anywho, we, we've been running long, and yeah, it's near the end. Uh, is there anything else you want to add in? I think that's about it. Like that's how we run a con, and uh, that's how we run a party. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, I yeah, have to yeah. mention this, or if you want to mention this, um, that this convention is the last, right? Yes, that's right. Uh, TFE has it. It is the last TFE, but uh, not the end of pony conventions around it. So, stay tuned while we decide um, the future. That will, I think, fall largely on the chief of C Pony Con. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But um, we shall see. We don't know yet. Yeah, I mean, it's officially last for you, and if yes. somebody picks it up, then hey, that's gonna be great. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, looking for that. Looking forward to that. True that. True that. So, anywho, uh, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themdshowgmail.com. If you want to reach us on Twitter, the show's Twitter account is at show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. So, Doc, where can the good people find you? They can find me at drcxy at Twitter. If you want to check the official TFE website, uh, it's www.ponycon.my. Friendship Express on Twitter is at Friendship Express, but without the vowels. <laughs> confusing. Confusing. Yes. Okay, so it's at F R N S H P X P R S. No vowels. <laughs> yes. Oh, boys. I hope I got that right. <laughs> I, I'm sure I'll link it in the show notes somewhere. <laughs> mm. Thank you, Norman. No Thank problem, you very much. No problem. And also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitch Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyForLife.com. Links are in the show notes. Also, do subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitch Radio. Over there, you'll catch me, Silver Quill, Sapphire Heart Song, review the Pony episodes, comics, and also movies. And sometimes we like to dabble in some other stuff. I think what we like to do this show called Miraculous Ladybug. Yes, that's a good one. Yes, chaotic also. And what um, Overwatch is one of the things that we like to talk about. Yeah, gaming. Gaming is fun. How do you like Ash? Ash, the new mm-hmm. hero. How do I put it? Uh, haven't played a lot of her, but um, mostly from what I see. Uh, oh, I, I I feel that her dynamite. <laughs> it's a little bit op at the moment because. Uh, if you get someone at low health and they don't have a healer yeah. nearby, you essentially kill them. They owe that. Yep, yep. Like, Arsh. I know. A bit, a bit. But it's not. I think it's what you would call this. Uh, I, I think those kind of kills are, uh, you deserve it. Like you kind of earn them. Ah, uh, really? You think yeah, so? Yeah. Because okay. okay. Um, first thing first, the dynamite. Uh, when it explodes, you need to shoot it or wait for it to detonate. And waiting for it to detonate mm. is kind of oh, there's a bomb over there. I should kind of go away from it. It's like a big flag, mm. but if you shoot it and to explode it, and the shot there is already hard to do, so you kind of deserve yeah. to get the kill. And yeah, if you're mm. getting hit by the grenade or the dynamite, you're kind of out of position. So it's kind of your fault to be in that scenario. That's how that's how I look at it. That's how I look at it. In other words, get good, avoid the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh boy. So what I was saying, yeah. Uh, we, we do that too. So everything will be in the show notes there to check it out. And if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With your support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I like to thank myself, Lag, Amy, Charles, Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Lurker Cat, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys, for your awesome support. You're great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I have been Charlie. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the BS Show. See ya. Bye-bye. Music.